This is the Black Parent Teleconference, brothers and sisters. If you have a question about your son or daughter, education or mental health, this is the Black Parent Teleconference. I'm going to do one per month. I am promising to do one per month. I will move to Delaware and be your third wife. Okay, Sister Danny wants to move to Delaware and be my third wife. What skills do you bring to the table, Sister Danny? Let's keep it focused on the kids. What is this? Oh, Lord, what is this? I'm a young African female being faced with showing interest in a young white male. I don't know how to overcome this snow puppy situation. I will be gladly proud if you're able to answer this question. Dallas, Texas, snow puppy crisis. Dallas, Texas. Okay. You want to date a white man. Do you have any knowledge of what the white man has done to the black woman in this country? Do you have any knowledge of that? Why would you, as a beautiful African woman, the female manifestation of feminine energy on the earth plane, why would you want to spread your wings and give access to your heaven? Why would you want to go snow puppy hopping, snow puppy shopping? Why do you want to do that? Why? I never knew how important a black woman was until I started listening to you. I built custom gaming computers. I built this one, honor my mother. A custom gaming computer. Wait a minute, we need that at FDMG. Is there any way you can be a sperm donor for me? I'm sorry, queen, I will not be donating any of my royal seed. I will not, I am not a sperm donor. I will not be donating any of my royal seed to fertilize an egg in your womb. Can we please stay focused? We are not talking about babies. We are talking about saving the children. I'm a regular financial supporter of FDMG. Our household has already budgeted to attend FDMG. All three of my sons will be at FDMG. That's what I'm talking about. But I want to know if they qualify. Two of them I had with two baby daddies. They're fully black like me. I dated and married a white man who came with his own white kid. He had with his white wife. With the, will this third child, who I love with my heart, although not related, be eligible to attend FDMG? I don't want to divide our kids across Delaware. So you have two black kids. Your white husband brought a white child into the marriage. Your sons are coming to FDMG and you want to know if the white boy can come with his step brothers. I will give you the politically correct answer. It is against the law in the state of Delaware to deny a child entry into any school, including independent, for reasons of race and culture. You need Jesus. Let's go to the next one. She cannot have your sperm because your sperm is mine. Lord have mercy. Ladies, we must stay focused. This is the Black Parent Teleconference, ladies. This is the Black Parent Teleconference. Somebody said, can I have King Kong? Hello, Dr. Umar. This is LG from Miami. How do I start a conversation with my girl about the benefits of polygamy? You just talk to her about it. If she's not for it, she's not for it. What's the ages of the white kid? I'm dating a black male. He sold drugs and comes from the ghetto. How do I... <laughs> I'm dating a black male. He sold drugs and comes from the ghetto. How do I try to change his ghetto ways? I'm an older black female. I want to have biracial children. 
<laughs> Should I have them wear African clothes? Who is this fool? Who is this fool? I'm an older black female. I want to have biracial children. Should I make them wear African clothes? What the fuck? Black women, y'all got to get it together. Sisters, y'all got to get it together. Sisters. Black women, y'all got to get it this, this is not good for the sisterhood. We got to do better. We got to do better. Hi, Dr. Umar. My name is Shay from Carolina. I'm a huge supporter. I love what you do. I got a 10-year-old son. Dad not active. Hasn't been since he was two. My son has always been around mostly women. Does not have a masculine role model. It's hard raising a young black boy alone. I agree with you, Shay. We got to get him around some men. Can you put him in some sort of a structured extracurricular activity? Okay. Martial arts, camping, robotics, chess, boys club. Get him around some men, Shay. Get him around some men. We don't want your son to be socialized to be female. We don't want your son to be socialized to be female. Black women have to stop socializing their sons to be women. I'm not saying you're doing that, Shay. Find a program for your son. Stop letting him sit up under women all day long. That's not good. We don't want him socialized to be a female. Black males, go back to the hood and volunteer to work with our sons. I don't blame the mothers for this. Black men, we must go back to the hood and volunteer to help these women, our women, with our boys. Will being a single mom affect my son? He doesn't seem happy. He's an honor roll student. I take him to do something special once a week. Not sure what I'm doing wrong. Nadia, you're not doing anything wrong, my beautiful African queen. You're not doing anything wrong. The reality is every child is designed by God to need both parents. Every child is designed by God to need feminine nurture and masculine nurture. Your son needs some masculine nurture. So my next question would be, where is the biological father? Why isn't he spending time with the biological father? And if he's not able to spend time with the biological father, due to prison or psychological illness, you have to find men in the community who will spend time with your son. Contact the black churches, contact the conscious organizations, or you might have to move to Wilmington, Delaware, so he can be an FDMG Pan-Africanist. You're not doing nothing wrong. Keep doing a good job. He needs some masculine energy. I'm a brother from Harlem. I can't stand black people. I need your help. I'm an educated black man, but I hate the things they do. I hate some of the things my people do too, my brother, but you can't hate your people though. Okay, do you hate white folks? Okay, because if you hate black folks, you must certainly hate white folks. And I don't believe we should hate nobody, but don't hate your people, my brother. Don't hate your people. We got enough self-hate going on. My name is Henry. My son is... Mid-twenties, can't get him to want to date a beautiful black woman. He losing his culture. Mm. Bring him to my lecture tomorrow. Stop sending me eye candy, ladies. I'm trying to focus on the children right now. Stop sending me eye candy. Let me be your third wife and... This is... That's too vulgar and explicit. Ladies... Ladies, oh, that was vulgar. Somebody sent me a very vulgar text message. I will not repeat it. Dear from New York, I just want to know if there's any advice. I already took that one. Rock in Cleveland, my wife and I have two kids expecting to make 11 more. Wait a minute, Rock. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Cleveland... Cleveland Africans, listen up. My wife and I have two kids and we are expecting to make 11 more children. Y'all have two kids and y'all want 11 more. That's 13, Rock. 
My daughter is five and I don't want my children to be part of the school system. But it's around that age where they require your child to be in school. What's the best route? Your wife is homeschooling. You will have enough children for your own school, Rock. Rock, if y'all going to have 11 more babies on top of them too, you're going to have your own school. The Rock School for Rock's Children. That's what I want you to call it. The Rock School for Rock's Children. 11 more babies. What you do for a living, my brother? Because I want to know how you're going to raise 13 children. And blessings to the woman. Because she's going to have a loosey-goosey, my brother. She's going to have a loosey-goosey. She got to drop 13 babies? That means you got to give her a baby a year. She gets no break. No, that wound gets no rest. Lucy Goosey. That's going to be Lucy. Rock, Rock, I need you to rethink this 13 babies, Rock. Rock, I need you to rethink 13 babies. Rock, I don't know about no 13, Rock. I don't know about 13 babies, Rock. Cleveland, Ohio. Is all my brothers in Ohio having 13 babies? Is all my Cleveland, Ohio brothers having 13 seeds? Cleveland, Queens, y'all dropping 13 babies? And there's some fine women in Cleveland. Cleveland, Queens, y'all dropping 13 babies? Lord have mercy. Kenzo from Brooklyn. I don't like my child's teacher. I spoke to the school about changing her class. They say the only alternative is special ed. Can you give me some advice? First of all, you don't go to special ed because your parent want your teacher changed. Special education has nothing to do with changing a class. Special education is a federally funded program that provides an IEP to children with a federally defined disability, including deafness, blindness, hearing impairment, autism, speech and language impairment, intellectual disability, emotional disturbance, orthopedic impairment, children who are both deaf and blind, traumatic brain injury, other health impairment, specific learning disability. So if that teacher told you the only way you can get your child out the class is to put her in special ed, that teacher just broke the law. Your daughter cannot qualify for special education until she has been comprehensively evaluated by a team that includes a certified school psychologist to determine whether or not she has one of the 13 federally defined special education learning disabilities or any additional disability that might be protected by your state's law. So that was ridiculous for them telling you she got to go to special ed if you want her out the class. What can I do about my son being held back in the third grade? What can I do about my son being held back in the third grade? What improvement should I take to circumvent him being affected academically? Okay. First of all, if they're telling you your son is going to be held back in January and school isn't over until May or June, if they're telling you your son is going to be held back in January and school isn't even over until May or June, if they're telling you your son is going to be held back in January and school isn't even over until May or June, something is wrong with that school. Something is wrong with that school. How in the hell can you say a child is going to be retained in January when he has the whole month of February, the whole month of March, the whole month of April, the whole month of May in many cases, and most of the month of June? So your son has at least four to six more months of school left, and they're already telling you he's going to retain either the school is trifling or you're trifling. And what I mean by saying you might be trifling is if the only way I could possibly see it is if your son did absolutely nothing from August or September until January. If your son did absolutely nothing when school began in August or September up until now, maybe, just maybe, I can understand why they might be holding him back. But to say a child is doomed to repeat the same grade 
in January with four to six months of school left, somebody's making a big mistake. Either the school is trifling and they have it out for your son or you're trifling because you didn't make him do any work for the first September, October, November, this for the first five months. Five months down, five months to go. Five months down, five months to go. 10 months in the school year. Five months down, five months to go. If your son didn't do any work for the first five months of school, he may have to. But let me say this to you. Do not put him in special ed just so he don't get held back. I don't recommend you put him in special ed just so he don't get held back. Let's not socially promote our young men and women through special ed. Let's not do that. Let's not socially promote our boys and girls through special education. Let's not do that, okay? Here's what you got to ask yourself. Does your son need a second year of third grade? Is it possible that he's not academically functional for the fourth grade or won't be? Or won't be? Because I am a big supporter. I'm going to tell y'all right now, and I don't care who don't like it. I don't care who don't like it. I am a big supporter of your child repeating a grade once than being in special ed forever. I am a big supporter of your child repeating a grade once rather than being in special ed forever. I am a big supporter of your child repeating the grade once rather than being in special ed for the rest of their education. What about summer school? Usually, if you're failing two major subjects, you can go to summer school and still pass. So you have to find out why are they dooming your son to repeat the third grade and he's only halfway through the year. Something doesn't sound right. We might need a one-on-one -on -one consultation. We might need a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Peace, King. I'm Kalik from Milwaukee. I want to thank you for empowering our community the way you do. You've given me a great sense of African pride I never knew I had inside of me. My son is two years old. I don't want him growing up in this matrix, Eurocentric Western society. I want him to go to FDMG, become an African warrior. I don't live in Pennsylvania, but for him, I'm willing to relocate. How would I go about getting him enrolled in FDMG? What is everything that I need? I can donate my time and service to help accommodate the school. I own a moving company, lawn care, junk removal, snow removal. I can do the schoolwork for free. I just want to help build a powerful community. I trust your leadership. Brother Khalid, I thank you for your words, my brother. It's words like that that keep me motivated and focused on the mission of African racial reconstruction and redemption. Here's what I would say to you. When we start accepting when we start accepting applications from parents, we're going to see how many applications we get. If we have more applications than slots, seats at the school, we're going to run a lottery. We're going to run a lottery. If we have more applications than seats, we're going to have to go to a lottery system where we pull names out of the lottery. Right now, I'm looking at two second grade classes of young African men. I'm looking at two third grade classes of young African men. And I'm looking at two fourth grade classes of young African men. So that's 40 second graders, 40 third graders, and 40 fourth graders. That's an inaugural class of 120. That's an inaugural class of 120. So if we only get 40 interested parents for the second grade, every second grader can come. If we only get 40 interested parents for the third grade, every third grader can come. If we get 40 interested parents for the fourth grade, all fourth graders can come. But if we get more than 40, we will have to go to a raffle system. That's how that is going to operate. If y'all want additional grades, additional classes per grade, we have to get the Frederick Douglass High School renovated. The Frederick Douglass High School is large enough to accommodate the high school and elementary school. So if we need to add some extra second grade classes, 
extra third grade classes, extra fourth grade classes, we will have to put them in the Frederick Douglass High School. There will be a waiting list. There will be a waiting list. If parents do not pay their tuition, their child will be removed from the school. There will be a waiting list. If parents take their children out, if they're forced to recuse their child for failure to follow the rules, there will be a waiting list and we will raffle names from the waiting list. So even if you're not given a seat up front, your child may still end up with a seat because another parent pulled their kid out, we took their kid out, or they failed to pay tuition. God bless you for what you do. We are. What are your thoughts on black children going to a white school at a young age? My daughter has autism. She's been invited to go to a private school specializing in speech therapy and special needs, but it's majority white. I want her to be around a more diverse population. I totally believe black children need to be around black children. I totally believe black children need to be around black children. However, if your daughter has a disability and requires a private school education, there's never going to be enough black children to satisfy her need for cultural comfort. Okay. Because she has a disability, because she has a disability, there are very few, if any, black schools for the disabled. There are very few, if any, black schools for the disabled. So unfortunately, if you feel your daughter needs to be at a private school for the disabled, she will almost certainly be around white children. But I would ask you to make sure your daughter doesn't end up in, in, in that special ed school for too long. Okay, make sure she doesn't end up in that special ed school for too long because special ed schools do not emphasize academics. Special ed schools do not emphasize academics. Private special ed schools do not emphasize academics. So your daughter, who is autistic, may not have a learning problem. Make sure your autistic daughter is not going to a autistic school unless she has a learning problem. If your daughter can learn in the regular classroom, why is she going to a private school for autistic children? You have to be careful with autism. Autistic children come in all shapes and sizes, skill levels, ability levels, and social communication disability levels. Make sure that private school is what is best for your daughter. Next up, you definitely got that Philly accent, and I love it. Cut it out, Queen. My name is Astrid Azanga. I hope I'm saying your name right. Astrid Azanga. I need to know if you know anything about King Azanga from New Guinea in the 1400s. I've been trying to get in touch with you for a while. Please forgive me for any disrespect. My father, who has now passed, made me promise I will research his lineage. Any information you have will be obliged. I'm prepared to make a donation. I don't know anything about that king, my brother, but it sounds like you need to make a trip to New Guinea. Sister Akua, please call me. All right, Sister Cool, we'll talk, but that's not a question about the children, beautiful. Fellow King, my name is Ali from Birmingham, Alabama. It seems like the past few years, the whites have begun to gentrify our historic Mecca. How can we as a people combat this white tide? Put pressure on the politicians, stop selling your real estate, and boycott every new black piece of every new black piece of property that's overtaken by the whites not sure if this is you but i'm just looking for a change in my life i'm 31 years old newly married i'm in a phase of my life where it's not leveling or or downgrading i just want to reach out to see if there's a way for me to do something better with my life sounds like you need a life coaching session 75 dollars an hour you don't send that to the school you send it to me okay you can paypal me umar the psychologist you can cash at me Dollar sign Dr. Umar Johnson. You can Apple Pay 
or Zell me, 215-989-9858. Please call me. You didn't give a name and you didn't give a city, so I'm not calling you. Follow directions. Okay. Shayla from Newport News, Virginia. My son's generation suffers ADHD. I'm afraid he may suffer this. Do you believe kids grow out of this? I'm never putting him on medication. ADHD don't exist. ADHD is a scam. ADHD don't exist. ADHD is a scam. ADHD don't exist. ADHD is a scam. Do not get him evaluated, Shayla. Do not get him evaluated, Shayla. I don't care what the school does. If you get your son evaluated for ADHD, they will label him. If you get your son evaluated for ADHD, they will label him. If you get your son evaluated for ADHD, they will label him. Once your son is labeled, they can force medication. The ADHD evaluation is the key that hooks you to the medication. The ADHD evaluation is the key that hooks you to the medication. The ADHD evaluation is the key that hooks you to the medication. Do not put on drugs. Do not get the evaluation. Raphael from Miami, what would you say to a black parent whose son or daughter wants to join the military? I would be against it, especially now. America is no longer in peacetime. But if they have to join the military, try to convince them to go in with a college degree, a two-year degree from community college or a four-year degree from a four-year institution would help your child get into the military as a officer, more pay, less riskful job, and easier life, okay? If they're dedicated to going into the military by any means necessary, make sure they get a degree first. Tell them we need you to get a degree, two-year degree or four-year degree, so you can go in there at a higher rank, higher pay, better livelihood, if they must go. But I do not like it. President Joe Biden was in Baltimore today. He trying to distract from the prince. Brother Charles, you're live with Dr. Umar, Black Parent Teleconference. Go right ahead with your question, King. Yes, sir. So I got a 15-year-old son, and I'm, um, you said that age where he's just being defiant and, you know. My question to you is, you know, I, I've already enrolled him into Free State. It's a military boot camp school. Is, is that a good idea to do for him? When does he go to Free State, and how long is the Free State program? Free State starts in July. And, and so we, we came up with a contract, and so he's trying to straighten his act up now, but it's like, are you just doing this just to not go to boot camp, or this, or this are you really trying to change? It starts in July, so he's got about five months to get his act together before he goes. Okay, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. He need to go to Free State. If he don't get his act together... He needs to go to free state. Uh, but what you need to do, though, is I think you need to sit down and make a contract with him so he's absolutely clear of what's expected of him in order to prevent him going to free state. You want to be very clear. This is what I need to see. Very specific terms. OK, and if you don't hit it, you're going. So give him some criteria on paper. So if you do decide to send him, he can't try to make it look like you wasn't upfront about everything you expected to see from him. Make sure it's all spelled out so there's no, there's no, you know, ambiguity about your decision when that date comes. Me personally, I'm kind of feeling like he need to go anyway, to be honest with you. I'm kind of feeling like he need to go anyway, but I don't have a problem with you giving him a chance. Understand. Yes, indeed. Thank yes, you, indeed. You, Dr. Umar. So we, we on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. Free state, absolutely, absolutely. See if he'll get his act together. What grade is he in? He's in the 10th grade. The other thing, too, if he doesn't end up going to free state, if he doesn't end up going to free state, the other thing you might want to consider is whether or not you need to have him take his GED and get started in college or trade school sooner. If he's not going to finish high school, and we hope that he does, but if he's not going to finish traditional high school, it may be best to get him in a GED prep course, get his GED so he can hop into one of these trade schools and get started on his education, learning how to be a plumber, an electrician, or a carpenter. Absolutely. And I talked to him about trade school, too. I told him, 
you know, before, you know, you can get your trade in, uh, in, in high school. And he was like, really? I was like, yeah, but they took that away. Right. Right. So, yeah. yeah I, I, the same phrase. I, appreciate, I appreciate you calling me. No problem, brother. Be safe. All right, you too, All right now. Sister Lisa, my son may have ADHD. No, he don't because ADHD don't exist. But I'm unsure if I should get him tested. How will that impact his future? I just want him to be able to go to college, but his grades are subpar. Any suggestions on how to help him? I'm training to become a licensed counselor so I can have a good list on how to symptoms. First of all, do not get him. What are you black parents looking for? When you get your sons tested for ADHD, what are you black parents looking for when you get your sons tested for ADHD? What are you black parents looking for when you get your sons tested for ADHD? ADHD don't exist. It is a Wall Street drug company racket and hustle. That's all it is. OK, it is sexism against boys. That's all ADHD is. ADHD is sexism against boys. If you can't sit still and act like a little girl, you have ADHD. Okay? It's sexism against boys. Schools are ran by women. The teachers are female. They only know how to cater to a female child. They're not trained on how to deal with masculine students. Boys are being punished for being boys. Do not get him tested. If you get him tested, they're going to force medication on your son. If you get him tested, they're going to force medication on your son. And if you don't medicate him, you will lose your son to the foster care system. If you don't medicate him, you will lose your son to the foster care system. Black parents, stop talking about ADHD. It don't exist. Nothing good is going to come from it. They're either going to drug your child or take your child. That's the only thing that's going to come from you getting your son diagnosed with ADHD. They're going to drug your child or they're going to take your child. That's the only thing that's going to come from ADHD. I wish y'all stop it. I've been preaching against this for 25 years and y'all still go looking for ADHD diagnosis. Lord, have mercy. Don't do it, my sister. Don't do it. Your son needs discipline. ADHD stands for ain't no daddy at home disorder. ADHD ain't no discipline at home disorder. ADHD artificial diet at home disorder. ADHD attention disruption due to home life dysfunction. Nothing good will come from ADHD diagnosis, drugs or foster care. Which one do you want? Crack or foster care? Which one do you want? Crack or foster care? Which one do you want? My nine-year-old daughter is having behavior problems. She don't want to go to school. She not social distancing. She's very disobedient. I need help or guidance. If she doesn't get an intervention, it's going to get worse. Okay. No nine-year-old girl hates going to school. No nine-year-old girl is a behavior problem. Unless she got some problems. Do you hear me, Winter? Your nine-year-old daughter don't want to go to school and she's a behavior problem. Something's going on. Was there emotional abuse, sexual abuse, parental abandonment? Where's the biological father? Sibling rivalry? Bullying? Low self-esteem? Depression? What's really going on with your daughter? What is really going on with your daughter? School is not the issue. What is making that baby not want to go to school? Why is she rebelling against you? Are there other siblings in the house? Do she feel you're spending more time with the other siblings than her? She's not rebelling for no reason at all. We got to get to the bottom of it, Winter. If you want to do a life coaching session or consultation, $75, you can hit me up. <laughs> I'm the third wife. Okay, ladies, cut it out with the eye candy. Fellas, we're going to stay focused, but they're sending eye candy to my phone. Yes, sir. Malik, you're live with Dr. Umar, the Black Parent Teleconference. Go right ahead with your question. I have a daughter. She 
she's not in the United States yet. I'm filing for her. I'm Jamaican, actually. And she's on the spectrum. She hasn't had a proper evaluation out there. As out as where? She, where is she? She's in Jamaica. Okay, Jamaica. Go right ahead. Yeah. So um, she's going to make a transition in, into the United States soon. So I was trying to see what's the best... Um, how, well, well, we're how to start, you know, that process for to get an evaluation. How old is she? She's 13 years old. 13 years old. You say she's on the autism spectrum? Yes. And you believe this, why? Um, what symptoms does she have of autism at 13? Um, her learning, you know, um, And I think uh, she she be more of a, a like a seven year old, you know stuff like that. Okay, because autism is communications. Autism is not learning. Autism is the inability to properly communicate with people verbally and non verbally. Autism is not learning. Like you can learn just fine and be autistic. So we have to make sure she really has a problem. Because here's my concern. Here's my concern. Um, black children from outside of the country our yes, African children who immigrate to America yes, sir. are often exploited by the public and charter school system for special education dollars yes, sir. because uh, your princess will be coming from Jamaica I am concerned that when she gets to Kentucky if you go looking for an evaluation, they're going to give you just what you're looking for. And your daughter might not necessarily have a serious problem. Is she struggling in school in Jamaica? Yes, she is. Okay. Yes, okay. she is. Uh, that, um, as is I've, I've been, you know, listening to you for a period of time, like for at least for the last four years now. So I know in regards to, you know, always to stay away from those medications that they're giving them and stuff like that. So I, I wasn't even looking to that direction. As I said, I just want to know the right step to get her um, properly evaluated because I don't think um, it, it, I don't think the resources was not um, open to the public like that in Jamaica. So that's why when she comes here, I want to see the necessary steps to make to so ensure that she's you know, she's well taken care of. If you get her evaluated, yes. if you get her evaluated, make sure I read that evaluation before you sign off on it. Yes, sir. The other problem I have, other concern I have, good brother, they're going to label her. I think they're going to overkill the situation. And if she's 13 now, she'll probably get here around 14. That's high school, high school. I don't know if special education is going to serve well for a black high school princess who just immigrated from Jamaica. Yeah. I'm concerned about her ability to graduate with a high school diploma from the United States of America if she, her first introduction into American school system is in the ninth grade and she enters with an IEP for special ed Having just got here from Jamaica, I don't like the prognosis on that. I don't like the prognosis on that. But if we got to get her the eval, then we got to get her the eval. What you might consider doing is you might consider having her privately evaluated. Pay for it out of your pocket. Black psychologists, state of Kentucky, Get a private eval and see what they do first. See what they say first before you let the school do it. Because I got a funny feeling the school is not going to do a good job by your daughter. Okay. All right? But you got my number. Lock me in. When she gets here, we need to have a conversation. Yes, sir. I, I and, really appreciate that. And I will be in Louisville, Kentucky for Juneteenth. I will be there on the Sunday, June the 18th, Louisville, Kentucky, Juneteenth. You'll see me there, sir. All right, black man, stay in touch. Stay in touch. Peace and pan African. Peace and pan Africanism. Yes, Somalis are black. What kind of dumb question is that?
Don't be picking on my Somali Africans. The Somali queens love Dr. Umar. I have no question you are just my hero. Thank you for what you do. Appreciate you, family. What's good, Prince? That's not a question. Let's talk to Zaya from Atlanta. I don't think this is Zaya Dwayne Wade's son, is it? Is this Zaya Dwayne Wade's son? Because if this is Zaya Dwayne Wade's son, we need a real conversation. If this is Dwayne Wade's son, Zaya, we need a real good conversation. Peace and love, Sister Zaya, Dr. Umar. How's Atlanta treating you? Okay. okay. Wait, who is this? Well, what's your question, beautiful? You're live on the Black Parent Teleconference. Okay, um, both of my children, they're 11 and 12, and they're both going through a dyslexia and dyscalculus. Mm -hmm. And, um, my So daughter, you're saying both of your kids got reading and math problems? Uh, what grade are they in right now? She's in the fifth grade. She's in the fifth grade. Uh, you said she has a 504. 504 only provides accommodations, not instructional modification. If you feel she needs instructional modification, if you feel the curriculum needs to be adapted for your child to succeed, she has to go back to an IEP. 504 plans do not allow you to modify the curriculum. If she needs the curriculum modified, it has to be IEP. So the question you have to ask yourself is, can your daughter survive without curricular modifications? If she needs the curriculum modified, she has to go back to IEP. What do you think? I think that an IEP would probably be beneficial for her. Okay, then you need to uh, request the meeting for an IEP. They might have to evaluate her again. How long since the IEP was discontinued? How long ago? It's only been a year, so they might be able to just go ahead and put her back on the IEP. But one thing I want to make sure you're not doing, one thing I want to make sure you're not doing, I want to make sure you're not coddling and enabling your children too much. And I'm only saying that because you said both of your children had dyscalculia and dyslexia. I'm not saying that can't happen. His dyslexia only came about last year. His dyslexia um, came about last year. If, you, last if year. your son was dyslexic, we would have... We did not surface until last year. So he, he wasn't, he wasn't having dyslexia until Okay. As I was saying, my beautiful queen, make sure you're not enabling them. Make them work, make them practice, make them study. But if they need the IEP, so be it. I'm only bringing that up because normally when I see two children from the same parents with the same disabilities, often there is a cultural, a family systems justification for why multiple siblings in the same house are having the same problem. Because learning disabilities are not passed down from generation to generation. They don't run in families. So when we see, when I see two siblings with the same disability, I start wondering whether or not the parents need to do something different within the home. Just a thought, just a thought. So just be careful about that. Well, there are some things that have been different since last year. So I decided to leave their father who wasn't helping me and then we moved to Atlanta. And How long since you left the father? Uh, it's only been two years. That could help explain their drop off in academics. See, you just yeah, brought up a very significant, me. you just brought up a very significant competing explanation for your children's challenges. So this may have nothing to do with learning and everything to do with their parents' divorce. 
I don't know that for sure, but it is a significant competing explanation for so those. It makes perfect sense because, like I said, but my daughter, she's the older one of the two, and she had a bad fall that developed grandma seizures and some other problems. Yeah. So neuro I've been praying. I've been fasting. I am trying to figure this out. You know what I'm saying? I, I, when, I was like, wait, what? This might be you, my you might need some counseling. You might need some counseling. You might need some individual sessions for children and some group sessions with the whole family. That's what it sounds like. I'm not too sure this is exclusively due to academics. I think there's some psychosocial family issues that are at the root of this. But you have my number in case you need to reach out and we need to do a consultation or life coaching session. Let me know. Okay, thank you. No problem, Queen. Stay in touch. Okay, thanks. All right. Bye -bye. I want y'all to notice how we sometimes make a mistake as black parents blaming academics for family problems. I'm not talking about this sister. Don't blame academics on family problems. If you know they're not performing because you're getting a divorce, they're not performing because they don't see dad, they're not performing because they don't see mom, you got to tell the truth. Okay? You got to tell the truth. Somebody's calling me on FaceTime while I'm live, so I'm going to have to block you. I'm going to block you because you shouldn't be doing that. Peace and Pan-Africanism. I just saw your stream about robots taking over. We're not talking about that right now. Hello. Brother Rodney, Dr. Umar, you're live on a Black Parent Teleconference. Go right ahead with your question. Uh, so uh, my question is about tutoring. Um, I, I kind of stepped in to help my daughter with my grandkids. And um, the oldest is um, in the third grade. And she's been struggling with her reading and writing. And um, I recently started taking her to Huntington Learning Center. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I did my um, update with the, one of the instructors there, they were inquiring about if they should talk to the, if, um, if they could meet with the, the school and talk to the school. For what? <laughs> that was my, see, that's what I wanted to ask you. Is that all for them to... The, the tutoring center to have some type of contact with the school or like is that normal the whole purpose for you going to the tutoring center is to keep the school out of it how much are you paying huntington learning center Ooh, that's a lot. uh 960 a month you're paying them a thousand dollars a month see these tutoring centers and i'm not speaking on them particularly but these tutoring centers are hustles my brother they're hustles she don't need Huntington Learning Center. All she need is a retired black teacher. That's all she need, brother. Find you a retired black teacher in your city, and they'll charge you pennies on a dollar. Might even do it for free to tutor your daughter. What grade is your daughter in? Uh, I believe that's her third grade. And she's only a third grader? You could probably get a high school student or a middle school student to tutor your daughter. But you don't need Huntington, my brother. They ripping you off, my brother. They ripping you off, and now they want to talk to the school. So you mean to tell me they're going to take all your money, and then after they take all your money, they're going to turn around and tell you we can't help her, put her in special ed. Hell no. And that's, and that's why I thought that she, she was trying to go with that. I think she is. I think she is. How many months she paid them? Uh, she ain't even been that much yet. Okay, this is your first month. I'm going to tell you, my brother, I'm telling you right now, you don't need them. Find you a retired teacher. Find you a college student. Find you a high school student. Find you one of those parents who has a child in high school who's very good at reading and math. Pay them $20 an hour, and they only need to work with your daughter one hour every other day. Three days a week is all she needs from a high school student, my brother. $60 a week. And that'll okay. that, uh, sixty dollars because you're paying nine sixty a month, right? Yeah, yeah. Six, you could be. You should only be paying a quarter of that, my brother. You should only okay. be paying a quarter of that. Get you a retired okay. teacher or high school student. Before you said that um, when the students get that far behind, um, that, that the, the 
the school is it's kind of on the school like the school is accountable for that the, the, you know the lack of teaching instruction stuff like that um i mean i saw some of the stuff that they did their evaluation like there's no way she should have even made it to the third grade the way that she's reading and um and writing and stuff like that. So okay, how, how much how much reading she doing at home out of school? Uh, see, that's the thing, you know. Um, I'm I'm not really there that much because I'm a truck driver. And um, okay, like I'm on my way home now. So is I'll the be, mother on the job though? Is the mother making her read? Is the mother making her practice? Do her homework? Is she checking it? Because to me, uh, I think there was a breakdown somewhere. You know, yeah, yeah. she ain't getting the instruction, but I don't think she's getting the practice at home either. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right about that. So, you know, me and the, me and the grandmother, we try to do what we can. But, yeah, her mom is, is kind of lax with that. We can't afford that, my brother. Maybe me, you, and the mom need to get on the phone and have a conversation. We can't afford that. Yeah. Black children yeah. got to be twice as good to get half as much. We can't afford the mom to be letting her slide without doing her best man that's going to catch up to her yeah yeah and then and then there's three more behind her so it's like you know i i, I see that the, the younger one after her is kind of picking up some some of the same lazy habits with the, the you, 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 you 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 gonna have to have a serious conversation with your queen bro because i'm telling you like this if that's me if that's me no 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 my queen that's my daughter no 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 the are you still with the mother no, we know. We, well, we separated, yeah. Okay, y'all separated, but you have four uh, children with her. Yes. Okay. If it's me, I'm going to come at her humble, and I'm going to say, listen, babe, your academic parenting skills are not up to par. You're not doing a good job academically. How can I help you out? So don't condemn or criticize. Ask her, how can you help her out? But if she don't step this up, my brother, you're going to have to take her to court and get legal custody of your children. And you might got to get physical, bro, because you got four daughters in there. If she don't raise them with a mindset of academic oh, excellence. No, 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 no. Maybe, maybe you misunderstood what I'm saying. I'm, I'm grandfather and she's grandmother. Okay, so you the grandfather. That, she's the grandmother. daughter that's been lacking and supporting with the schoolwork. Okay, but the daughter is the biological mom, right? The daughter is, my daughter is the biological mom. Of and where's the biological father? Uh, in Chester. Chester, PA, down the street from me. Mm -hmm. So the parents aren't really involved at all? Uh, not really, no. Okay. No. Can grandmom handle this? Are there some aunts and uncles who can step in and help out? Because we got to get them academics together. All them looking at special ed, bro. And that's yeah. not, we don't want no whole family. Four girls and they all in special ed. That ain't a good look. It's time for a family meeting, bro, for this get out of hand. They still young. Let's nip it in the bud right now. She don't need special ed. She just needed a tutor. And it sounds like all of them might need a little tutor to help make up for what they're not getting at home. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah, you might got to get you some tutors. So you're saying look for, try to find someone in the neighborhood who could step in and do that. Tutor. Yes, sir. Retired teacher, retired teacher or high school student is what I would go with. Okay, all right. I appreciate that. No problem, man. Keep me posted. All right, thank you. All right, bro. Dr. Umar, my name is Daryl. I live in Korea for four years. My daughter is two. Was recommended to go to special ed. What? Well, two years old, she can get speech through the pediatrician. Three years old, she can get speech through the special ed service. Her Korean caretakers only speak Hangul and no English. Okay, so if your two-year-old black daughter's Korean caretakers only speak Hangul, okay, then this is not a speech problem. This is a Esau problem. Your daughter don't have trouble articulating herself. She doesn't understand the English language. So you can still get her speech if you want, but speech is not what the issue is. The issue is she doesn't understand the English language. So you need to get her an English teacher, an English tutor. Your daughter needs to learn the English language, okay? Get her a black caregiver. We might got to give up the Korean caretakers with the hand goal. Okay, but um, 
This is not a speech problem. This is language. She don't understand the language. So you're going to have to get her an English teacher who can teach her. She don't have to stop learning Korean. She don't have to stop learning Korean. But she needs to start learning English. I'm 17 years old. I'm seeking help with learning how to move around as a black man. We can talk later, young brother, but it's 11 o'clock and your ass need to be in bed for school tomorrow. Black power. My name is Anaya. I'm from Camden, New Jersey. I got issues with my nephew getting picked on at school, acting out. Any advice? Okay. Write a letter to the principal about the bullying. Bullying is illegal. I would also write a letter to the superintendent and the chair of the school climate office for the school district because they cannot let your nephew get bullied and do nothing about it. Have you been keeping good anecdotal notes on these bullying incidents, Anaya? Okay? Okay? Do you have the dates, the times, who the children were, what was going on? All right? You need to have a log of bullying incidents and you need to write that log up and send it to the superintendent. And if they don't want to do nothing about your son being bullied, you know what I would do? I would write a letter to the United States Department of Education Office of Civil Rights and I would accuse the Camden School District of racial discrimination against black children because they allow black kids to get bullied and do nothing about it. But when white kids get bullied, they intervene immediately. So I would threaten them with a complaint to the United States Department of Education on the basis of racial discrimination. That's exactly what I would do, Sister Anaya. If we need a consult, let me know. Char from St. Louis, my son was diagnosed with autism. Is there any additional services I should be requesting with the IEP? A sixth grader diagnosed with autism? A sixth grader initially diagnosed with autism. Sister Char, you might want to pay me a consultation fee to review your son's autism evaluation. Sister Char, you might want to pay my $75 consultation fee because I'm having a big problem with your son being diagnosed with autism for the first time in the sixth grade. Something don't smell right, Sister Shar. Bria from Florida. Tyree Nichols situation was a hoax. Orchestrated psych op to cause chaos and make money. Five cops, cops are crisis actors. They were never on the police payroll. What cop brags about beating somebody up, knowing they're wearing the camera? The Keenan Anderson situation didn't cause an uproar. They had to create a hoax. I don't know about that, Sister Bria, but this ain't the time for that. Rest in peace to Tyree. He's an ancestor, so his death wasn't a hoax. He's gone. Nas from Massachusetts. Sixth grade, my son got an IEP, SLD. I got him tested outside the school by neuropsych, dyslexia, and ADHD which as a teacher, I agree with the dyslexia. I made sure his IEP has a lot of accommodations necessary to assist him. He is in the 10th grade, inclusion, honors biology in US history. If he has honors biology in US history, a learning disability, dyslexia, well, if he can read the biology and if he's in honors biology and honors history, how does he have dyslexia? He's not and will not ever be on meds. My question is, will having an IEP hurt him when applying to college? No. No. The disabilities won't hurt him applying to college. You don't have to worry about that. Unless he's going Ivy League. Now, if he's applying to Harvard and Penn and he got an IEP, I still don't think it's going to hurt him, but they might look twice. My biggest issue is, does he need an IEP at all? If he got honors classes, I don't know why he need an IEP at all. Darius from New Orleans. I'm starting an Instagram, pushing some pieces of your narrative. Continue to speak out and I will spread your word. Thank you, brother Darius from New Orleans. Good night, Dr. Umar. My daughter has been accepted into an international baccalaureate program in Montreal, Canada. Frequently, most by other black students in which white people deem the school is not good. Staff and clientele represent our society, and that's what I want for my child. Can you give me some responses to say to people when they question why I'm deciding to send my child to a mostly black school? Why do you feel the need to explain yourself? If you're sending her to the International Baccalaureate School, so be it. 
Why do you feel the need to explain a decision you made for your child? Tell them it's your decision. You're the mother. There's nothing more to talk about. I want to thank you for your advice last year. Because of you, I took my child who was struggling out of a charter school, all Hispanic administration, put him in a private school. Head of the school is black. He is excelling. Powerful, powerful, powerful. I just came from Miami. My daughter had an episode last night. She was up all night for me to find her in the kitchen crying at five in the morning. Right before I had to go to work, I talked to her. She said she was cutting herself. Past trauma when she lived with her mom. Therapy, Jamal. Therapy, Jamal, ASAP. ASAP. Google black psychologists on your phone in your city. Get your baby some therapy right now. This is serious. Self-harm in a young black princess due to past trauma. That's serious, my brother. That's serious. Get her a therapist tomorrow. Don't wait, my brother. Do not wait. Google black psychologists in your city. Google black psychologists in your city. Get her a therapist right now. Where's Devin? How you doing, beautiful? Wait a minute. Hello. It's California. <laughs> What's going on, gorgeous? Where you been? Are you? Where you been? Ah, uh, busy. With... You ain't popped in in a while. You ain't come to none of my California lectures either. I'm going to get you. <laughs> busy with children. I've like... been wanting to contact you for the last two weeks or so. I'm having an issue with my daughter's school, her charter school. Charter school. What grade is she in? Sixth grade. Six? Sixth grade, yes. What's huh? What's going on with her? So, I don't even know where to start. So, she's been having um, pretty much anxiety. Okay. And she's been having to stay home because she just does not want to go to school. She's having a lot of school refusal. And anxiety school, for what? Bullying? What's going on? Not bullying. She, the teacher to me? She says there are a couple of teachers that are mean that she doesn't like, um, but they're not taking that too seriously. They're just saying, oh, the teachers are just, they have to be strict. They have to kind of go along with what needs to be done in the school because of all the other students, but she's on the spectrum and she does not like people talking too harshly, too hard to her. So mm -hmm. they're, they're basically saying, oh, well, she has to learn how to deal with it, no, right? No, no. Question, these teachers, what's what, the teachers are white? What's the racial? Uh, They're mostly the black. Mostly when, black. Mostly when, black. And the students are mostly black. But your daughter. Hispanic, black and Hispanic. Black and Hispanic. Your daughter is on the autistic spectrum. Yes. So you need to write a letter to the principal and request a 504 plan meeting. You want your daughter to have a 504 plan. And on the 504 plan, uh -huh. okay, you 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 want her who who does your daughter like the most adults in that school is there somebody she kind of gravitates to a teacher staff no, member staff staff members usually cuz my son used to go there so um there's a couple it's mostly women okay mostly women in the school that runs the school so um it's just a couple staff members she feels comfortable talking to okay so i'm not quite familiar with 504s i know about the ieps but like what does that entail the 504 the difference between the 504 well first of all both of them are federal right mm -hmm. both required by law right iep is a modified curriculum mm -hmm. for children with learning problems right your daughter should only have an iep if she has trouble learning in the regular class. It right. sounds like your daughter can learn as well as the other children, correct? Yes, yes. So but she also has ADHD. Well, ADHD so, exists. But anyway. I know you don't. <laughs> yeah, ADHD, we ain't even talking about that. But, <laughs> All right. but, 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 you could put ADHD on a 504 as well. Okay. But I'm thinking you should only put autism on the 504 because if you put ADHD on a 504, I'm wondering if they're going to try to twist your arm to put her on medication. So I think it's best not to mention ADHD. Leave that alone. You follow me? Yes. Leave that alone. The doctor the autism. Now, here's the thing. I want you to brainstorm all of the modifications 
that you want them to make, excuse me, accommodations. Accommodations. That yeah. you want them to concede to your daughter during the school day. So if you think she needs regular breaks. Yes, she has that. Her time to take her tests. If yes, she needs that. her tests in a different room. Mm -hmm. If there's a certain staff member she should meet with when she gets overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. But you know what I specifically want you to think about? Mm -hmm. How do you want them to communicate dissatisfaction to your daughter. Because she's autistic, yeah. they cannot come at her the way they come at the other children. You exactly. understand? Right. She's protected by the 504 for her autism. So mm -hmm. you have to think about maybe they don't voice their dissatisfaction. Mm -hmm. Maybe they give it to you and you voice it. Mm -hmm. Or maybe there's one teacher that all the other teachers communicate their dissatisfaction to, and she meets with your daughter once or twice a day, and she mm -hmm. voices it. You okay. feel? But the way they're talking to her as a child with autism, I would argue, constitutes a form of discrimination against her on the basis of disability. I just don't know how to go about. <laughs> I no, no. Now and understand what you're saying. I have a meeting tomorrow. If you had a meeting tomorrow, I have one. Tomorrow. I did this live. We would have never talked. So why didn't I hear from you before today? I know. I've been. Oh my god. Because I've been dealing with my son's IEP as well, and then all this stuff with my daughter. So now, because she's been out of school for. Uh -huh about 12 days because she Why just wait stop 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 i know for 12 days why i know so we're in that danger zone of but why why was she out for 12 because days? she was having meltdowns she was having uh nightmares not wanting to go to school she's and so you decided to keep her out yes don't do that they'll get them truancy people on you already went to a meeting don't nah nah nah, nah. what you have to do listen Whenever a child has a disability, you exploit that disability to protect your child. Do you hear what I'm telling you? I hear you. If your daughter is on the spectrum. You ain't got to pull her out of school. You ain't got to do none of that. Exploit the autism to protect your baby. But she has not been wanting to go to school. She's been crying. She's been having meltdowns. She, this is what I'm telling them. I'm telling them she's having yes. the actually, issues, the right? Yes. Yeah. So what should I do? I can't make her go to school. She's back listen, in school now. Listen, She's back listen. in school now because I know I'm in that little danger zone with the truancy. This is what I'm telling you. Yeah. You think your daughter needs a one-to-one -one aid in the yeah. classroom. That's they yeah. go on their IEP. I'm scared. Yes. But I'm, they've been refusing that. They can't. No, this is what you do. This is what you do. You she's never had a 504, correct? Just the IEP. Your meeting tomorrow is about what exactly? About um, increasing her, accommoda uh, her accommodations for counseling. And we're also, I have a regional center um, representative that's going to be in the meeting that is going to talk but about. She no longer has an IP. Right? She no huh? longer has an IP. No. I can hear you. Your daughter no longer has the IEP. No more. She does. I no. She does. You told me she didn't have IEP no more. I said she has an IEP. That's 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 why I have the meeting tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. So if she has the IEP, mm -hmm. okay, something you need to think about. You can get an additional 504. Mm -hmm. She can have both. Do you understand me? Yes. She can have both. I think you should get both. Because okay. with the 504, if they violate your daughter's rights, mm -hmm. meaning they discriminate against her on the basis of her autism, you can sue them in court for money. You follow me? 504, you go straight to court. IEP, you got to go through due process. Yes. So I would request a 504 meeting. But here's the thing, though. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. A couple things because she still got the IEP. Number one, does your daughter need to go to an approved private school for autistic kids? That's a thing? Yes. But <laughs> she may not need it, though. Stay with me. She may okay. not. I want to give it to her if mm -hmm. she don't need it. That's one thing I want you to think about. Mm -hmm. Second thing I want you to think about.
okay. You voluntarily kept her out for 10 days. The IEP team should have, they should have sent a special ed teacher out to the house to provide your daughter with homebound instruction. You follow I, I about that. What did they I, say? I asked about that. They said no because she wasn't in school and it was oh, like, no, keep no, her they're out. wrong. They're wrong because she has autism. Autism is a communications disability. Mm -hmm. She was overwhelmed and anxious. That's yes. her disability. They yes. should have provided her with at-home instruction. Even through the charter school? Because, you know, yes. the rules. Yes. No. Charter schools are public schools. They have to do the same thing that the public school does. I'm, just, I'm, I'm so overwhelmed. And I'm so nervous for this meeting tomorrow because they are denying I, I, everything. I that you didn't hit me up before today. I'm pulling all I'm your things. Myself. Oh, and all your Myself. Okay. I really am this, this, because this is what you're gonna do. Listen. <sighs> Can you reschedule that meeting? Uh, Twenty four. Well, tomorrow. Well, tomorrow. You got two choices. You got two choices. Go. Don't sign anything. Mm -hmm. You talk to me when it's over, so we mm -hmm. come up with the plan of action. So that's one. Go. Collect everything. Sign nothing. But get as much as you can. Um, like, like her. Uh, I think you were asking. I remember. I remember the last time I asked you what I what paperwork you needed. Yes. The um, was it the evaluations you needed? The evaluation. Or? The evaluation. Okay. But you're not questioning her autism. No. Your issue is the quality of service she's getting. Yes. Okay, which is an IEP issue. Mm -hmm. I know it's a lot of questions. It's no, a lot. No, 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 no. I'm not overwhelmed. I am. I got you. Which is why we should have had a conversation. So I'm going to put you on a poster for this is what black parents need not do. I'm just picking with you. But I think you can push it back. Okay. I, but if you want to go, go. Don't sign. Now, the, the, the advocate that's going with you. Yes. Are they following your lead or are you following their lead? Who's in charge? They're following my lead because of what I've reported to them and they're going to see if we can try to get her a one-on-one. -on -one. But they've been de denying a BII service to my daughter for the longest. What's BII service? BII. What's that? That is a one-on-one -on -one person. Just Tell for her. BII stands for. What's the acronym? The Behavioral Interventional something. I forgot. Okay. That's but, what they yeah. With. Got you. Yeah. Did you ever put it in writing mm -hmm. that you wanted that one on one? Did you write a letter to the yeah. principal? Yes, I keep ev I document everything, not to the principal, <laughs> to the head of the um, okay. IEP team. Okay, yeah, but you have it on paper. Yes, that you requested a one on one. Yes, I've requested they, also in every meeting. How did they notify you of their refusal? Of that she said that again. How did they let you know they were not going to give her the one-on-one? -on -one? Did they send you a They email? let me know um, through her evaluation that they've done the social, emotional stuff that it seemed like she doesn't need it. Nah, nah. She clearly needs it because you had to keep her home. Do you yes. feel me? Mm -hmm. She clearly needs it. So you got to bring she that back. Self -harms. <laughs> and she self-harms. And she also need a therapist. You got to get her a therapist. Yeah. Not the school, but she got yeah. one. Mm -hmm. You got to watch that because that's serious. Now, mm -hmm. here's the thing. Well, wait, let me step back. Is there something deeper going on with her because of the self-harm? Or is this no, only... It feels thing? like she can't express herself and she gets anxious and she just scratches herself until she bleeds. How long the therapist been working with her? About two months. Because it's been, it's been <laughs> very you, hard to get her therapy outside you, of school. Because these places are like overcapacitated, like they're inundated with so many people with mental health issues, and especially children, it's yeah. hard to get a therapist. You don't want to use the agencies. Get you a private black psychologist out there. The black it's psychologist. Hard to find black psychologist. That's who it is. It's hard. No, it's hard to find black psychologists. I'll get you one. Text me. Text me. The Association of Black Psychologists is based in LA. It's based out there. That's where it was founded at. Yes. Y'all have them all out there. I can I can help you find one of them. But here's here, here's what we need to do. You need to put together a letter with all your concerns. That's number one. You feel me? Mm -hmm. 
You need to put together a letter with all your concerns. I requested this. I did not get it. I had to keep my daughter home for 12 days. Y'all didn't offer me homebound instruction. They are denying your daughter FAPE. Her free and appropriate education is being denied. They probably owe your daughter compensatory education, mm -hmm. which means they have to pay you for all the days she wasn't being educated. You have a lot. There's a lot they owe you. I just wish I could have helped you plan better for the meeting, but that's okay. Don't sign anything. Don't agree to anything. Just say, I'm going to take it home. Think about it and let y'all know. I really wish you could reschedule it, though, and do your letter so now they know what we're going to talk about when you get there. You feel me? You're right. But when you go to the meeting, it's three things I want you to bring up. You ready? Mm -hmm. Three. Number one, my daughter needs a one-to-one -one aid. Yes. Are you guys denying it or are y'all going to give it to her? It's clear she needs it. That's number one. Number two. Why hasn't my daughter been offered homebound instruction since y'all know I was kept in her home due to her anxiety? That's number two. About that. They said they don't. That was my choice. What do you? Well, yeah, if you took her out, it's not on them. Because you took right. her out. But do you have it in writing while she was home that you asked them to come and provide the home? I actually asked them that yesterday because I had to go to the truancy meeting and I asked about all of that. But yesterday Is there was the first thing provided while my daughter was at home, like work she could have done on a computer, um, workbooks, different things like that. They said, no, well, you just, you decided to keep her out and she wasn't in school. So all of the work was based from in-class work. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have anything on. It, 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 here's the thing. They have to give her a one-on-one -on -one to see if that does the trick. If that doesn't do the trick, we got to look at approved private school for autism. Okay. We got to look at homebound instruction. You also have to consider whether you need to take her out that school altogether. That's what I was planning on doing. I was going to put her in K-12. That school to the neighborhood school. To the neighborhood schools? Yes. How would you compare that charter school to the neighborhood? No. No I, way. I wouldn't put her in the neighborhood schools. Okay. No. Okay. Mm -mm. She can, I don't think she can handle being. Because your daughter has an IEP, does she get pulled out at all to yes. work with the special ed teacher? How often? She No, she gets uh, for speech. She gets for, um, what's the other one? Uh, she... autism support. Huh? Autism support with the, with the special ed teacher. How often is she pulled out by the special ed teacher for autistic support? Oh, at the end of the day. At the end of the day, that's like her last period to like catch up with the rest of her classes to make sure she's following along. And um good enough because if she's diagnosed with autism, mm -hmm. he's supposed to be helping her work on her communication skills. That is not for catch up. You, you follow what I'm saying? Right. Autistic okay. support means you get support for your autism. It's not homework club. They're mm -hmm. using it for homework club. First of all, she shouldn't be meeting with the special ed teacher at the end of the day, school over. It should be sometime in the middle of the day so she can apply some of what she learned mm -hmm. in class after she meets with the special ed teacher. So now we got to look at the IEP and yeah. see what are the goals on her IEP for autism. I honestly think you have a case. I think you have a case. I guess it's a lot more. It's charter school. Question is, what does your daughter need? What does your daughter need to be successful? That's what I need you to meditate on overnight tonight. The, the best world for your daughter would be what? I want you to Google private special education schools in Los Angeles County. See what special ed schools y'all have. Go on their website. See if any of them look like they would be a good place for your daughter, right? We don't want her there long term. Maybe just for one year, mostly because you could request that her placement be changed from the charter school to the private school. And they would not give me that information. They're I not going to bring that information because to the charter schools don't want to spend no extra money. Exactly. They're not going to give you that. That's why I'm here. Right. So. Okay. I hear you. I hear you. Okay, and I've been wanting, like I said, I've been wanting to contact you, but I just, I've been dealing with my son's IEP as well because they're denying him um, I got you. I got this you. is learning. You so, might got 
them to do process with the state of California. Yeah. Dependent, but but this is what you do tomorrow. This is how you use tomorrow's meeting. Bring up all your concerns and see what they say. You feel me? Yes. One to one eight. Bring up mm -hmm. private school. Bring mm -hmm. up homebound instruction. Those are three things you need to bring up. Okay. You, you follow what I'm saying? Bring yes. them up. Yes. They, now, here's another question. Do you have a third person you can take along with you and the advocate who can write down the responses that the school team gives? You need somebody who can take mm -hmm. notes because you're going to do a follow-up letter. You and I are going to do a follow-up letter after tomorrow's meeting. Okay. We got to be able to quote them. Oh, you the advocate is going to do that. The advocate is going to do that. She's going to she's going to be doing what, that. You, you met her before? No, I've talked to her many times on the phone. Well, since the last week. Do I need to ask her that? That's what you're telling me? Ask her to take the note? You need a third person. Do you got a girlfriend, a cousin, a sister, somebody else who can go with you tomorrow? No, it's, it's via Zoom, so. Oh, so you can record it? Yes. Well, okay. no, I have, to, I have to request the recording 24 hours ahead of time. No, 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 no. Don't you know how to screen record on your phone? You just screen. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to know you did. Because after you record it, you're going to go back, right? Just for reference, yes. This out is just a reference. So you can include some of the quotes in your letter. Yes, 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 yes. This play by no rules. We ain't playing by no damn rules. Nobody's going to know you screen recorded. You're only screen recording so you can capture some of the quotes that they give you. So when we do your follow-up letter, it's thorough. I hear you. Such and such said, because they're going to say some illegal shit. Do you feel me? Yes. I promise they're going to say some illegal shit, because that's what they do. Lazy blacks. We got them. Screen record the shit. Okay. okay? And then we got to do the follow-up letter, because you might be taking them to due process. I that's didn't know it was virtual. thinking. I that's I why I have the now that I know it's virtual, you're gonna ask as much as you can. You feel me? Yes. And then I'm gonna watch it. And once I watch it, I'm gonna see all the shit they didn't say that's gonna go in your letter, and we got them. You feel and me? Everybody's telling me take notes that I have so many questions and I have so many notes that I already written down that I need to ask. I, I know I've been for the meeting. Yes, I'm gonna screen record it. Questions. Yes. Yes. Listen. Yes. After the meeting is over, we talk about it. I'm going to screen record it. All right. That's, I'm glad it's virtual because you get to capture it. Mm -hmm. If it was in person, you needed to have somebody else there. So you're good. You're good. Screen record. I'm not going with whatever they tell me. I don't play like that with my kids. Remember, but the purpose I mean, of your questions. Chat. The purpose of your questions is to get them mm -hmm. to admit their guilt. We and what want they can do. to say what they feel, which I know is going to be against the law. Do you feel where I'm coming from? Yeah, I know. So you want them talking. Ask them stuff. One-on-one. -on -one, homebound. I don't think the IEP is appropriate. What other options do we have? Do you feel me? Mm -hmm. Throw out anything. Throw out all that. Because we want them to talk, 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 talk. Because that's going to help us with the letter. Okay. 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 Okay, it's tomorrow, so I've been preparing myself, so. Good, you're good. But this is what you should do. You should brainstorm some questions, mm -hmm. like 10 of them that you need to ask. You feel me? And I'm not gonna, I might tell you to add a few more to it. Because I want them to say things that traps them. You understand me? I hear you. So that, that, that's the goal. You're fine because they broke already a lot of laws and rules and policies and provisions, so... The, here's where I'm not clear at, and you have to help me on this because I haven't met your princess. What would be the best thing for her? Because our letter is going to end with what you want. Do yes. you feel? Yes. So you really think about what you want. Do you want her at a private school for a year? Do you want her at, um, do you want her to get some homebound? Do you just want to try the one-on-one -on -one aid for right now? Really think about what she needs. We got to be clear on what we want. You never don't want to know the solution. You got to have your solution. You never leave it up to them to give to you. Tell you yeah. You feel yeah. me? So we straight, right? Don't worry. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I was just going to really, really push for the one-on-one -on -one since she's back in school because I don't want her harming herself. Push, Number one. Push for it. Yeah. But this will also do. The one-on-one, -on -one, ask them, has this person been trained? 
Because you just can't grab somebody off the street. They need to have been trained on one-on-one -on -one techniques, working with children. What training, what professional development has the proposed one-on-one -on -one aid for my child received? Ask them. That's one of your questions. Okay. You feel me? So give me the 10 about what I said, 10 o'clock in the morning, your time. If you do it tonight, send it to me tonight. I'll you do it tonight because I'm still working on some stuff right now. Okay, send it to me tonight um, and just screen record. Yeah, okay. Me, I will me. do that. I will do that. I will do that. Thank you. Okay, Queen, keep me posted and cheer up. Get that look <laughs> off your face. It's going to be okay. You got this. Trust me, you got this. They've already done a lot of things wrong. You got this. Question, okay. screen record, and then we're going to do the follow-up letter. Where okay. we come in, the follow-up letter is what's going to matter most because you're going to decide if that letter is going to that school or if you want to take them to due process with the state of California. You feel me? I've been to due process. It wasn't fun with my son. So, right. Um, but nerve wracking. So, I, I just, I want to like find a solution before listen we to, get listen there. To me, listen to me. Let me share this with you. School teams get the best of us because they can read that our energy is already needed. Listen to me, baby. Don't you get on that live. I'm better than this on live with them. Believe me, I'm better than this. I'm just okay. very nervous okay. right now, actually talking okay. to you and okay. dealing okay. with the whole thing. Okay. This is not my energy when I'm with them. I'm not, no, no, okay. no. You never let them see you sweat, ever. No. Never crack. All right? Never. They look okay. for that. They look for that. You feel me? They mm -hmm. try to break our mothers down. So you get so tired of fighting that you just throw in the towel. I'm Don't never going to stop fighting. That's, that's one thing I think they understand. I'm never going to stop. Gotcha. So, so yeah. thank you. Thank no problem. You. I'm going to look for the question. Here, so. Thank okay. you. No problem. All right. All right. Bye. Gotcha. Okay. Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters. I think we're going to end it right there. I think we're going to end it right there. And now you all know why we need our own schools. Now you all know while we need our own schools. Now you all know why we need our own schools. Now you see why we need the National Independent Black Parent Association. As soon as the Dessaline Turner Gymnasium is approved for use, as soon as the Dessaline Turner Gymnasium of FDMG is approved for use, I will be having a training conference. We have to restart the Black Parent Association. We have to restart the Black Parent Association. We have to restart the National Independent Black Parent Association. Who is willing to start a chapter in your town? Who is willing to start a chapter in your city? Who is willing to start a chapter in your neighborhood? Who is willing to start a chapter in your community? Who is willing to start a chapter in your state? Organize, organize, organize. Organize, organize, organize. Germaniac hoodies will be in the building tomorrow. Who the black queen's gonna come out who going to be the first black queens to put on that Germaniac hoodie? Sisters, when you put your hoodie on and you go home and your man start hating on Dr. Umar because you got on your Germaniac rhinestone hoodie. When you put on your Germaniac rhinestone hoodie tomorrow and your, your king be hating on Dr. Umar when you get home, just text me, baby. Just text me and say, Dr. Umar, I'm moving to Delaware. I'm going to be your third wife. Dr. Umar, I'm moving to Delaware. I'm going to be your third wife. Third wife. 
Dr. Umar, I'm moving to Delaware. I'm going to be a third wife. We got red Germaniac hoodies. We got black Germaniac hoodies. We got pink Germaniac hoodies. We got tan Germaniac hoodies. We got white Germaniac hoodies for the Germaniac queens who ride hard for the prince. If you don't ride hard for the prince, you cannot put on the Germaniac hoodie. If your king starts hating on your Germaniac hoodie when you come in the house with the rhinestone hoodie with the King Kong on it, just text me, say, Doc, I can't take it no more. I'm leaving this beta mail. I'm coming to FDMG. I'm going to be the third wife. Now, with that being said, I need everybody to hit the cash app. I need everybody to hit the cash app. I need everybody to hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Dollar sign FDMG school. Dollar sign FDMG school. Hit your cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit your PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. Paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. Paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. The grand opening of the school is coming. It's coming. We, we, we right there. We about to cross the finish line. Thank you to all my donors from around the world. My continental African donors. That's right. Africa helped us build that school. Europe, my London Africans, my Birmingham Africans, my Luton, my Wolverhampton, my Manchester, my Bristol Africans, my French Africans, my German Africans, my Austrian Africans. I got to give a shout out to my Toronto Africans, my Montreal, my Jamaica, my Bermuda, Bahamas, Haiti, Turks and Caicos, Montserrat, Guadalupe, Aruba, Carousel Africans, Brazilian Africans, my uh, indigenous Africans in Mexico been donating, my West Coast America Africans, my East Coast American Africans, my Midwest, my down South. This was a global Pan-African effort. First school in American history built by the African diaspora. <laughs>